Hey folks, it's Jared Mennonen from the website TahoeTrailGuide.com. Today is March 17th, 2022, and I have to reluctantly admit that the end of the cross-country ski season is upon us here at Lake Tahoe. Now, we still have a relatively significant snowpack, so I probably will be skiing through April, or at least mid-April, so long as it holds, but I don't really need all of the skis in my quiver ready to go. The reason being is no matter how much snow we get between now and April, it probably won't be enough to warrant taking out my widest backcountry cross-country skis. Because we have such consistently warm temperatures now that it's springtime, um, whatever snow we get consolidates pretty quickly so I can get away with using a bit more narrow cross-country ski. So I'm going to just take you through this quick process of preparing your skis to put away for storage over the warmer months. Essentially it's a truncated version of just traditionally waxing your cross-country skis for use on a regular basis. We're gonna brush and clean out the bases, we're gonna apply wax, and that's it. It's very simple in that respect. So if your skis are excessively dirty, what I recommend doing first is to brush them out with a steel brush. If you're skiing long into the spring, chances are those skis, the base of your skis, are going to be really dirty just because so much natural debris is starting to come up. Pine needles, pine cones, bark from fallen branches, just toxins from the air that collect in the snow and then concentrate when it starts to melt away. There's a lot of things that can conspire to turn your skis, at least the bases of them, really dirty. And it may not look like it, however, it's, um, it's there. And you want to clean that out before you apply storage wax because you don't want to bring all that dirt from this season into next season. So again, I like to use a pretty coarse steel brush for cleaning my skis. So a little secret about these skis is that I've actually had them waxed and ready to go for fresh snow for quite a while. So they're not super dirty. I know this because I haven't used them in probably a month and a half or maybe a month. So they're not super dirty, but I still want to give them a thorough brushing with the steel brush. If the skis weren't as dirty, I would use a bronze brush or a copper brush. Both of those would be fine substitutes for a cleaning brush as well. So you could use either. And if all you have is a bronze brush, use that brush. I don't recommend going out and buying a steel brush just because you don't have one and you want to just clean for storage waxing. That's probably a little bit frivolous or just unnecessary. So a bronze or a copper brush would be sufficient as well. If your skis were super, super dirty and you really wanted to give them the full treatment, you could use a base cleaner on your skis. And with this one, this is a spray on version. So basically I would spray this on the base of the skis and wipe it off with, uh, with fiberlene, preferably not just a rag, but if all you have is a rag and you don't want to buy fiberlene specifically for cleaning the base of your skis, that's okay. Um, I honestly don't use base cleaner a whole lot just because I like to wax my skis and usually I do a pretty good job of cleaning them just through routine brushing and waxing. So I tend to not use base cleaner a whole lot. Mostly what I would use base cleaner is if you had a waxable classic ski and you want to clean the grip zone of all its old um, bad grip wax, I would use the base cleaner for that. But usually in the glide zones, I tend to not use base cleaner, unless of course it's just excessively dirty and I did something above and beyond what I normally would ski over. I would use that base cleaner. But generally speaking, you can get away with brushing the bases clean with a steel brush or a bronze or copper brush. At this point, it's time to apply the wax. And generally speaking, for a storage wax, for a long-term storage wax, 
use a softer or a warmer temperature rated wax. So for example, you could use Swix Yellow or Toco Yellow. Both are pretty warm. This is for uh, air temperatures of 32 to 50 degrees. So this is really warm and soft. And that just essentially conditions the base of the ski the whole time. I use a uh, general purpose just a white block of Swix wax instead because it's a little bit less expensive than temperature specific yellow wax. So my preference is just to use the least expensive wax as possible. And also, this is probably a little bit colder rated than that yellow wax. So when I go to scrape and brush the skis in the fall for the new snow, this might be a little bit more appropriate for that new colder snow. But you can use whichever. At this point, I'm going to crayon in a layer of wax. And then I'm going to also dribble a little bit over the top of that. And if you can see, I don't know if this camera picks it up, but the wax iron was on for a little bit too uh, cold of a wax. So now I'm getting a little smoking going on here, which is something that you don't want to do because it does release toxins into the air that you're now breathing. But this is a very quick process, so I'm not too concerned at this point. So I've crayoned a little layer of, of wax onto the uh, base of the skis and I dribbled some over that crayoned layer. And the reason I like to crayon a layer in is just so that it provides a little bit of a barrier between the iron and the actual base of the ski. And then I go a little bit liberal with dribbling the wax on there. Again, a relatively inexpensive wax, so I don't feel too bad about using a little bit extra. A lot of people will ask about the grip zone, what to do for the grip zone. You could technically apply hot wax to the entire uh, grip zone, but then in the fall when you wanted to use them, you would have to slowly iron that and then wipe it off with paper you would have to get some it would take it would be a laborious practice i have met people who have done that i don't do that i just worry more about the grip zone during the season when i'm glide waxing the tips and tails of the skis that's when i'm more concerned with applying a paste or a liquid wax or a spray on wax over the top or brushing the hard wax that I've ironed in, scraped off, I'll brush the scale pattern as well to get residual new wax into the scales so that they don't collect snow. The dry base is generally what causes snow to collect to the base of your skis um, and makes it so that you don't glide very well. Believe it or not, that's pretty much the process of preparing your waxless cross-country skis. One thing that I would also like to point out is to avoid putting your skis in somewhere where they're going to get completely baked over the summer. So choose somewhere that's cool and away from direct sunlight. You just don't want them to be getting dried out because they can warp over time. They do use wood in a lot of these things and the bases themselves. I mean, the whole reason that we're applying this wax over these warmer months is to try to reduce the amount of drying out or oxidizing of the bases. We wanna keep those bases conditioned as much as possible so that when we do ski on them, we can apply those rules of controlled friction, and I'm not going to get into it right now, but the idea of why we wax our waxless cross-country skis, at least the glide zones, in the first place. So we want to have really good gliding properties when winter comes around. So if we do our prep work in, in the summer, we should be set up to play in the winter a lot more uh, enjoyably. And in the winter, or when the first snowfall hits, that might be in the fall and you want to get out there skiing on that fresh snow. At that point, all you have to do is scrape and brush. I wouldn't worry too much about getting temperature specific wax applied to the bases at that point. Just use this wax right here. Good enough is usually good enough. 
So you can get away with just using whatever wax you choose. Yeah, that's about it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions or feedback, post it in the comment section below. Check out Tahoe Trail Guide for more detailed information about waxing your cross-country skis. If you want to contribute in a financial way to the health and longevity of Tahoe Trail Guide as well as this YouTube channel, I do offer three different payment options, Patreon, PayPal, and Venmo. I just want to say I appreciate so much all of my Patreon subscribers as well as those who have tipped me through PayPal and Venmo. You guys are the best. I really appreciate all your support. It's always a fun time chatting with you guys online. And again, people benefit from the conversations that we have in the comment section below. So please share your thoughts, ask your questions. I love to respond to them. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your season.